Burlington, Massachusetts, I heard that, and it's very liberal up there. Um, they, they, they had Pride Day. And you guess what? Those Gen Zers supposed to come in with their rainbow shirts. You know what they came in with? Red, white, and blue. And they started chanting, my pronouns are USA, USA, USA. My pronouns are USA, USA. I'm saying, who told them to do that? And when you see stuff like that happening in a liberal enclave like Massachusetts, you've got to ask yourself, what is going on? I will tell you what's going on. It has come to a head. And people are just tired of being pushed into a corner. They're tired of having to ex oh, Come on, somebody. Gen Z is going to rise up. Things are going to change. Change will come from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Everywhere you turn, you are going to see change because people are coming of age like Moses. And when you come of age, you reject every lie. You can't walk in a false identity any longer. You can't wear what other people put on you. There comes a point when you've got to find your own voice, find your truth. Come on, somebody. And live that to the glory of God. So Moses represents these children of this age that were born in a time when they weren't supposed to make it. But they escaped the tyranny of Pharaoh. And they're going to change our world. Mark that, mark that down. I'll, I'll be around by the grace of God to see it. I have grandchildren who are Gen Zers. I have millennials and Gen Zers. Come on, somebody. I have them from the age of 21 all the way down to a year old. 14 of them God gave me. Come on, somebody. I'm watching a revolution right now. The second thing I want to do, not to get off track here, Moses' father. He became a father in a time when men were being oppressed, overworked, and marginalized. He became a father in a time when men were being made to feel as if their only purpose was to work for Pharaoh, build his cities, do his bidding. You don't hear much about Moses' father in this story, except that he was the son of Levi. For the record, his name was Amram, and his mother's name was Jochebed. But you didn't need to know that. But if you cared. But all through Moses' story, he grew, in, as he grew into a leader and eventually became the lawgiver, there's no mention at all about Amram. Safe to say that, he wasn't involved in his upbringing because Moses was raised in Pharaoh's house. So where was he all that time is the question. Well, nobody knows, but uh, if I were to hazard a guess, he was like many fathers today. He was missing in action, missing in the lives of our children, missing from the PTA meetings. Come on. Missing from the dinner table, missing from the big events in our children's lives, that first piano recital, come on, the graduations, the baseball game, missing in action. You weren't there for my Christmas play, Dad, and I got my first major role. Where were you? You said you were coming, Dad, but you never showed up. Where were you? Missing in action. Children carry the wound of disappointment and promises broken from us as fathers. And fathers carry the heavy burden of guilt, a man almost sometimes that they cannot resolve. And they're estranged from their children. And please hear me today. I'm not trying to make an excuse, but it's hard to be a man. I got four people said, mm hmm. <laughs> it's not easy. To be a man, said this man. I was watching a little uh, thing on YouTube the other day, and there is this woman who did the surgery to affirm that she was actually a man. <laughs> Can I just give you a little, if you, listen, no, no, I, please. Sometimes I, I don't want to be funny here, and I'm not trying to be funny here. Let, let me just pull it back and say this way. Because if anyone is here struggling with gender dysmorphia, I, I, as a man, I, I don't ever want to be a woman. I don't want to be a woman. Because it's also hard to be a woman. I mean, let's get that clear. 
And, and if you're struggling with gender dysmorphia, even though I cannot personally understand it, I empathize because I have come to learn because I've studied it. It's real. People are genuinely confused about their gender. And I'm not making light of that. And I want the church to be a safe space for any one of you who struggle with your sexuality on any level, whether it's gender dysmorphia, same-sex attraction, or whatever. Don't hear me saying that we don't want you here, we don't like you. Please don't ever let that into your spirit. This is your only hope. And if you're here, thank God that you are because you need to hear this. It's hard being a man. If you're a woman, stay a woman. It's not going to change your life because this whole idea is really grounded in self-hatred. And so when you change to become whatever you think is going to make you happy, you're going to still struggle. They won't let you see the people who are detransitioning because it's really about self-hatred. If you hate yourself, whether you're male or female, you're going to still struggle with who? Yourself. That's another message. But this guy was talking. I won't call him a trans man because I don't believe there's such a thing. There's a woman who got the surgery to be, become a man. But at this very core, he's still a woman. I'm not even going to talk about the cellular level. He's crying his eyes out on YouTube, sobbing like a woman and crying with a woman's voice, saying he's sorry he didn't know it was so lonely being a man. He says, when I was a woman, if I was, when I was dealing with my gender dysmorphia and I went into a public bathroom, the women would all come around me and hug me and talk to me and they would open up and they would let me talk and I'd cry on their shoulders and I'd go home feeling good. I became a man and I have no friends. Nobody wants to talk to me. This is not funny. Loneliness is a horrible thing. It's the precursor to suicide for many people. But he was just talking and crying, and I thought, this isn't funny. This is actually very, very sad. And it's sad for many reasons because many people will not know just how sad it really is after the fact. Because they don't let you have a voice. I want to say this. I want to say this. If you believe there's more than one gender, don't pick male. If you're going to change from whatever you are now. 